It's the Hoffman Show. We are on the Team 980, always live as well on the free Odyssey app and streaming live on YouTube at the Team 980. Uh, my interview with Luke McCaffrey, we're going to put that at 530 because John Kime is here. And hey. he said, hey, I can stop down and, and chat there football. So oh, here yeah. we are. Um, and and that, that would be pretty funny, though, if I just brought you in and was like, hey, do you want to introduce the interview I did with Luke McCaffrey? <laughs> I don't feel like that's a, that's a good use of your talent. Um, all right. What we were just talking about Jaden in the break. Obviously, he's the most important thing. So let's not pretend like we're going to be uh, too highbrow to talk about uh, something else other than the most important thing. I thought uh, it was like it kind of like the accuracy and some of those things a little inconsistent today from him. Still continue to be very impressed with his demeanor. What did you take away from him in his first mandatory minicamp? Yeah, I, well, first of all, um, those things have been there, right? The, the demeanor, the patience in the pocket, and it's – it's easy to be that. It's easier to be that way when there's no live rush. I mean, there's a rush, but you're not getting because there was even one play where he scrambled outside of it, and he hits Diami for 45 yards. May have been sacked. The may have thing, been. I, may have been sacked. <laughs> now I will say this: like with a guy like that, you do have to say may have been. Right. Like you see that guy get out sure. of stuff. So in fairness to him, so I'll just put may have been sacked. Yeah. Still a nice throw at the end. Sure. Um, and apparently it was a nice catch from Diami. I was screened from it. Apparently he caught it with one hand. He caught it. Yeah, it was a really nice catch. So, so good job, Diami. Yeah. But so you see that, right? And you're right. Like there's some. There's. He's not perfect, and he's not going to be. So, but you do see sometimes there's a sometimes not. I don't know about. I don't think we saw like indecision today. I just think there were a couple of throws. You're like, where are you going with that one? Or that mm-hmm. one's a little bit off. And then other throws are really good. You know, he had one little scramble where he throws back to Diami, running the other way. It's a really nice throw. Good eyes, good feet, everything. So you see all that as well. I think st- I always tell people the biggest, the best things, the best thing this spring isn't so much what you see from Daniels as much as what you hear about mm. Daniels. By far, I think that's the, the most important thing. Because like, you're, like, what we're seeing is the kid who's got talent. But what you're also not seeing, Craig, is like a kid who, do, who looks lost out there. That's not him right. at all. So, but I do think it's what you hear it matters to me a lot more. How much is – I'm not trying to take credit away from Jaden because the answer to this can be both. How much of that is Jaden and his – I'm going to call it professionalism, which he started to really develop before his senior year at LSU. The famous stories of the changing locks in the building, and he's going in. like He started acting like a professional last year at LSU, and the results are tremendous. The Heisman Trophy, the whole deal. Uh, number two pick in the draft. But also how much credit goes to the coaching staff, because it's not just Jaden who seems to be on top of things, but it seems like this, that practice and kind of the, the, the rate at which they're installing, all that stuff seems very well put together so that there isn't a lot of confusion and yes guys make mistakes but it's football mistakes it's not just a chaos practice where nobody feels like they know what they're doing that's a good point i will still say though to me it always starts with the player now but you are right like you don't look and see we're not watching seven on seven work well we haven't seen the seven on seven the last couple times but it's been 11 11 but you're not seeing like we have in the past at times guys tucking and running in seven on seven you, don't, you haven't seen much of that at all. So I think that speaks to preparation for all of them. But I think for Daniels, it has to start with the person, yeah. period. You know, when you, want, when you work like that, a coach can't make you work like that or they can't make you care like that. And, and that's where, to me, it makes the difference. That's what gets your butt in there at 6 a.m., right? Now, I don't know – I'm – going to guess the other quarterbacks are coming in early as well that's kind of the nature typically usually the nature of guys who play that position so you know but what I do know is he does that and I think you know like but that comes from within and that's where it was at LSU as well but I think that's a good point that you make that it's not like others are coming in there looking unprepared Mariota might make a bad throw but he doesn't look unprepared at all. And, and we haven't seen a lot of – we haven't seen Hartman in the 11-11. You see Driscoll a little bit. But they don't look – but these guys don't look lost. And yeah. that speaks to – And the receivers, the line, defense, like it, it's a team-wide thing. It's clearly a culture, but like it's a chicken and the egg. Daniels, the reason he's here in part, the reason Peters fell in love with him is because that's who he is as a person. Right. He embodies what they want to be. So it's, you know, again, chicken egg, which came first, but it all, it all meshes together. And to – going back to that point too because there were definitely times last year where they were learning a new offense where you're not hearing coaches having to 
force them to get back in the huddle to call it again and to do little things a certain way. Like, it's all being done. Like, you don't feel like you're watching a new system being installed because the way, I don't want to say they, they certainly haven't, I wouldn't say mastered it, but, there, but it's been a, a smooth transition to this offense. For sure. John Keim, ESPN.com, also the John Keim Report. Uh, check out that podcast wherever you get yours. Uh, with us here in Ashburn, we're live after the Commander's day one of mandatory mini camp. The other thing that uh, Toby and I were talking about earlier in the hour that I think is pretty fascinating is how they're mixing and matching personnel groupings on defense and, like, layers of the depth chart. Like, sometimes you have guys out there that are the fourth-string defensive backs, three of which won't be on the roster, with Bobby Wagner, Frankie Luvu, and Jeremy Chin kind of lined up as, as two linebackers, a third quasi-hybrid, whatever Chin is, and the second-string D-line. You're like, how did you guys wind up on the field together? And I, I wonder if you've talked to anybody about that or the reasons why you think you're doing, they're doing that. Like, is that intentional or is that random? Oh, I think that's definitely intentional. And I know they're, they're, they even talked about a little bit last week where you want to see how certain guys perform with guys like Wagner. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, and I don't know if this is accurate or not, but when you watch this, though, when you have new people out there, what does it force you to do? It forces you to communicate well. Mm, and so, that's a great point. So, like, that's one thing. And, I, you know, you, to me, I saw that when they're doing a lot of no huddle work, too. You, you've got to do – and we know that that's been a problem. But I do think when you have that, you have – especially new defensive backs coming together, you better talk. And same with the linebackers, right? And so I, do, I, think, I think that whether or not that's intended, to me, that's a byproduct. But, yeah, I think they like working guys together. And plus, the way they talk about their defensive stuff – you know, Joe Witt talked about it last week. I mean, defense are guys you rotate a little bit more anyway. For sure. And Greg Williams would always talk about this in the past. Like, we don't have 11 stars. We got 20 stars. We got 20-some packages. But if you are going to use all that, guys have to get used to playing with different people around them. So I think that kind of prepares you for that. How do you handle other guys coming in in a certain role or whatever? Yeah, the communication point is so good because that's something that I also feel like I noticed. I have noticed in general, but today, like, really stood out. It's mm -hmm. just there's a constant chirping yeah. on that side of the ball that is definitely different. Of course, it's June, so you always want to put that caveat on it. June her. last year. Yeah, but, right, June, June over June, year over year yeah. on, on the data, um, it definitely seems like everything from, you know, the uh, – the, the lack of messing up on offense and having to restart plays and people know what they're doing uh, to the communication. Like the process just seems a lot cleaner this year compared to certainly last June. And uh, I've been here since 2015, John, and I would say just about any June prior. It's, it's been a better June than they've had in a long time. For yeah. sure. For With, sure. Without a doubt. Uh, last thing real quick, uh, just a, a note. Bob Myers was here today. Uh, which is like a fun thing for him. Like, hey, let me go in between game two, game three of the NBA Finals. What do we know about his role as an advisor moving forward if any such thing exists? I think it's a lot. For, and what he's been for Adam Peters is a sounding board on yeah. key decisions. So when you're going through the coaching process, the qualities that you look for to build a championship team roster, et cetera. During the draft, um, he was able to help with Peter, it's just, again, sounding board. It wasn't like he's saying, you got to take this guy, but it's more like follow the process. You know, you don't have to, you know, you make the pick when you have to make the pick. So people keep saying, well, who are they going to be? Well, in March, whatever, early April, they don't have to say. They don't have to even, clearly they knew who they liked. Right. But they didn't have to say, like, they didn't start spreading it, like, oh, we're taking this guy, Jane Daniels, because there was no need. Right. Don't make the pick before you need to. Because for the other thing, and so I think that he's helping him with a lot of those kind of um, uh, the philosophy, right? Yeah. It's a, Adam's a first-time GM. And one thing, you know, it's funny because the more you're around this, like the more you hear like basketball and football coaches oftentimes swapping ideas, yeah. ideas philosophies, strategies. You know, Quinn did this with talking to college or, uh, basketball coaches about – positionless basketball how that could how then taking ideas for football and you know i've seen this with other coaches too or heard this so i think you know but in their case it's it's general organization running and how you structure it and just you know philosophy for sure um one of my favorites of that category uh the 10 or god at this point it's yeah about 15 years ago um eric spolstra went to oregon and uh talked to chip kelly about so, uh, about kind of that 
the way that they were running the up-tempo stuff, and that's basically how he built the offense that ultimately wins the Heat, the championships with LeBron. Uh, Tom Haverstroh did a great story on that a decade plus ago. He, he did, and I, I just saw – that's exactly – that was the other one I was thinking of because it was yeah. LeBron. I saw the, a clip of him talking about that and how phenomenal Spolstra was with that yeah. and how they incorporated it in their offense, and then you saw examples of that, and it's like it was phenomenal. Yeah. But, like, yes, and that, but I, I like how, you know, when, when a coach is innovative in a certain way, why not go talk to them? Because clearly it's 11, 5, it's a different sport, but conceptually you can take ideas. Yeah. What made you have them. that thought? Right. And, and then like, how do I apply that thing to my exa- sport? And they did it, and you saw, and it was, they took off. But, yeah, and that's, but that's why that guy's been such a great NBA coach. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Uh, John Kahn, you can check out the podcast, the John Kahn Report. He'll have a full practice recap all three days of minicamp. And, of course, you can read his work on ESPN.com. Thanks for stopping by, dude. Thanks, Appreciate Greg. it. Of course. This is the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.